I'm in Cleland Wildlife Park in Adelaide, southern Australia. And I'm feeding a kangaroo. But in a minute, I'm going to see a koala. And I'm really excited because koalas eat eucalyptus. And eucalyptus has been really important in the development of Australian chemistry. Two days ago, I was giving a lecture and I made a terrible mistake. I said I was going to see a koala bear, because that's what we call them in England. And I was told off at once, they're koalas, they're not bears. So I apologised. Should we give him a gentle pat just on the lower back area? Yeah. And just not around his face. Eucalyptus is a whole series of different trees in the same family that grow in Australia. And this is one of them here. There are nearly, I think, seven or eight hundred different species. Uh, but what characterises most of them is that if you break off a leaf and crunch it up, you get a very strange smell from the oil. And it was analysing this oil, which was really one of the starts of chemistry in Australia. And so, hey, hey, Hanky. You're a good boy. I'm just trying to find it there. That's a nice leaf. Good boy. You can extract quite a lot of oil out of this leaves. And the oil is quite poisonous. So very few animals eat the leaves of these trees, which means that they're here for the koalas because the koalas have a digestive system that will get rid of the poisons, which would kill other animals. So the tree, in a way, is like special restaurants for the koalas and nobody else can eat them. Analysing the oil was quite a challenge and some of the first chemists isolated a molecule that's called eucalyptol or sometimes it has a more technical name of 1,8-cineol. So while I was here in Australia I found an article in this magazine about the first chemist in Australia and very conveniently for me it has a nice picture of these molecules and this molecule here has a variety of properties but the oil itself is an insecticide it has a nasty smell and presumably the insects don't like it either. My father used to use eucalyptus oil when he had a cold and one day and I don't know why he put it on his hair by mistake. And my God, there was a smell. Could hardly sit in the car with him. So I'm sure the insects don't like it either. Oh, you're a really good man, Hank. He's a lovely koala. Yes. He's a very chilled character, laid back. And of course, that's why I brought him out this morning. And even to this day, you can get eucalyptus oil to buy as a remedy for yourself. Here is photos of old eucalyptus oil, but in the shop here at the Wildlife Centre we've saw, seen eucalyptus hand cream, eucalyptus soap, even eucalyptus tea. I don't know, perhaps you can drink and keep the insects away, I don't know. They just stay lovely still. Keep your hands down. Do not move at all. That's it. That's it. One hand under his bottom and one across his back. Just put one hand across his back, this hand across his back. Beautiful. Eucalyptus oil is a mixture of compounds, but the cineol is the major component. And depending on the species of eucalyptus tree, so you get more or less. And in some species, it's really quite a high percentage of the oil. And that's the ones that they found where they found it first. But now they've found it in all sorts of them. There are other types of eucalyptus tree which grow in Western Australia, near the city of Perth, where the tree has lots of different stems, which they think the, the, the wood from those trees could perhaps be used as a biofuel for aeroplanes. And a company now is trying to make aviation fuel out of eucalyptus trees. But I think I won't wait to go home till they've perfected the process. But Let's come back to the koala bears, because the... Oh, you called it a koala bear? <laughs> <laughs>
sorry, let's try that again. Let's come back to the koalas. And the koalas eat the leaves, but they're very fussy. They only want some leaves and not others. And chemists have done quite a lot of work to try and decide why they choose this leaf and not another one. And the answer seems to be that they sense the amount of a toxic compound or a series of toxic compounds that are based on a benzene compound called fluoroglucanol. It's fluoro with a pH, so it's not got fluorine in it. And this is trihydroxybenzene. And this in itself is rather an interesting compound because the industrial manufacture of fluoroglucanol goes via TNT, the explosive. And you can see these trees are making fluoroglucanol and they're not explosive, so they must be using a different pathway. And in fact, what they do is that they make the compound via a ring of six carbon atoms without the benzene character and then right at the end they convert this into the benzene whereas industrial chemists begin with benzene and work the other way. So there's a lot of clever chemistry that we can learn from trees. In the tree there's not fluoroglucanol itself but compounds made from it and the tree I think has it to discourage animals from eating it and even the koala doesn't like it, so it goes for those leaves where the fluoroglucanol levels are low. And I expect that the koalas have evolved so that they can smell this compound in low levels, so that even if we couldn't smell it, they could tell that there wasn't much fluoroglucanol. What did you think of holding the koalas? I thought holding the koala was fantastic. I think it m will be probably the best part of my whole trip, though I'm still going to see some wallabies. But these leaves that the koalas eat don't have much nutritional value. Part of the reason they eat it is to get water, because normally, unless they're ill, they don't drink water at all. But they have to eat really quite a lot. The one I was holding has to eat nearly a kilo of leaves a day. So, and takes quite a long time. So all the koala, but, sorry. So all the koala does is to sleep and eat and eat and sleep with about 19 hours of sleep and five hours of eating. So it sounds quite a good life. No time to make chemistry videos if you're a koala bear, except for the one we saw. You just called it a koala bear again. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we leave it? Yeah.